Right then, you lovely lot. So, podcast time. So, we've just been out filming with the legend that is Will Raisin <laughs> at the beautiful Gold Valley Lake. So, all you members, make sure to uh, to check that out, uh, which will be um, there for you to view very, very soon. But, podcast time, Will. Yep. Welcome, mate. Thank you Thank very you, much. Mate. Yeah. Um, I want to first <clears throat> off talk about sort of the involvement of waggler fishing. Mm. I think it's it's probably the first time I really, well, it's the first time he ever came here, actually. Gold Valley was the first commercial he ever fished. Way back in the day, I'd have been, I reckon, 13, 12 or 13, I'd have been. Yeah. So, I'm 40, yeah, so it's quite a long time ago. Mm. Uh, and I drew on gold next to Tommy Hillier. Yeah. And I'd never seen this style of waggler fishing before, folks. It was basically these big, blooming, bodied wagglers tucking out miles, what seemed like miles when I was like back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. With balls yeah. of sticky mag. Yeah, it's yeah. It's like, yeah. I've never seen anything I mean, like it. <clears throat> obviously, it, it was a method that came around the more carp venues and that. that. But I always remember when we used to own Willow Park, yeah. we used to have an invitation match. And it was Ian McNeil who used right, to okay. deal with the fish yeah. and Jan Porter. Right. They came and everyone's fishing Willow Park, like ball knitting on the pole with ground bait and casters. and With lake know, and lean. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. but but um, and, and you know these two guys turned up with these massive wagglers and firing ground bait out to the middle, and they didn't necessarily win, but they caught carp. Right. And it was like, whoa, you know, this is a bit. And I can remember a couple of days later, I came down here and I'm like firing some ground bait out, and in the end, a ball would land, and there's a tail. And at the time. Stevie Gardner and Kenny Collins were, were, yeah. were running Willow Park. Yeah. Um, and it was brilliant for me, mate. I sort of just learned to drive and I was down here fishing. I was say, how old have you been then? Like, obviously 17. So yeah, like, I'm talking bit, like, yeah. you know, 15, 16, 17. You know, if I couldn't drive, I'd literally be down here so I could just walk to Willow. Yeah. It's not far, but what was really sort of instrumental in all that was, you know, Stevie would be at Willow, running Willow, and I could just go round there. I remember I went round there and it's like, you know, seen what they've done and I've you know, just got some normal big wagglers with bodies and casting them out and we're catching some carp and firing ground bait out. And, you know, like I always remember going round there and Stevie obviously was into his international fishing. He had yeah. masses of big wagglers from Italy and here, there and everywhere. and. He's like, right, tomorrow I'll bring these in and we cut some down and this, that and the other. And I always remember because <laughs> Stevie made this waggler and it was perfect. And we've well, well, gone down to the lake together and he's like, my hero still is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he's whacked this waggler out with this, this Milo rod and it's just snapped at the butt. And I was just <laughs> like, I don't know what to do or say, you know, but that was the, and I remember for a, a year or two, you know, we caught loads of fish firing ground bait out. Um, and then a, a, a very good friend of mine, he's not with us anymore, Simon Gould. Right, yeah, um, yeah. He was, you know, that was his forte, yeah. sticky mag, ground bait, big wagglers. Um, and he won a lot of big events all over the south, but he was it, really... Was it him who first come across like the sticky mag, would you say? Right? Yeah. The ground bait, Will? Right, yeah, okay. I mean, I think a few of us started doing it at the same time, but he sort of really took it to the, the next level. Um, and, you know, like a few of us have commitments away from the, yeah. the, the commercial scene. I just sort of, you know, was fishing for the Young England team and trying and Stevie, obviously, but Anders like Simon would just hear every match, every match, and they perfect it. And you, you know what it's like trying to compete against someone yeah. that no is chance. just perfecting a method. It's very, very difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it just went on from there, you know, like before pellets, it was maggots, ground bait, even loose feeding maggots. Um, so the technique was sort of born from there and then obviously pellets came into it and yeah, the yeah. rest is and, history. And it's gone. I want to touch upon um, <clears throat> Larford as well, Will. So I'm going back, when was it? It's like 2006, seven or something? Uh, yeah, it would have been around that A long time, time yeah. ago. I remember, yeah. I uh, um, yeah, Fisher Mania qualifier folks at Larford Lakes. Um, I was on the arena pool and then all talk was like Will catching on a big waggler with balls of ground bait. I'm like, yeah, yeah. we weren't even down to fish, but you've just said yeah, like, yeah. you got yeah. a ticket that morning, didn't you? Yeah, so basically, cut a long story short, the day before match fishing used to run the match fishing cup. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that was on the Friday and the fish show was on a Saturday, Saturday yeah. or that was on a Tuesday, fish show was on a Wednesday. 
and a good friend of mine that I used to travel with all the time, Ben Leach, yeah. brilliant angler, yeah, doesn't yeah. fish now. Um, but we went on the match fishing cup and I think I drew peg 26 on, 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 leg, on Specy yeah. and won the match. Yeah. They caught like 160, <laughs> 170 pound, firing out balls of ground bait. A lot of people didn't have the bait and weren't geared up for it. So yeah. you start raining in these balls of ground bait full of casters, dead maggots, and within an hour, you've got every carp in your swim. And you pretty much had it all to yourself, yeah. didn't you? Not yeah, and they're big time. fish. Yeah, yeah. Like I say, won the match fishing cup, stayed at Ben's that night. He only lives down the road in Bath. Um, I said to him, you know, I'll come back with you tomorrow and watch you, you know, and rocked up, there was a spare ticket, drew the next peg to where <laughs> yes, I was the day mate. before. Love it. Got to set up the same three rods, did the same thing and managed to qualify for fish show. But in all my fishing, mate, I, I love attacking, yeah, using man. bait. Like I say, I was brought up, of, my dad showed me the, the basics and, and um, brought me into match fishing. And ultimately from then it was Stevie. And, you know, back in the day on the Thames um, here, Stevie was the most aggressive feeding angler yeah you know he would just like and he always said to me you know like i'd rather fail having given myself a chance than you know come third or fourth and yeah. know that i didn't give myself a chance to win and that was the sort of mindset that i had fishing with stevie for a lot from a young age um it was attack 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 right okay um and obviously that style of fishing firing in balls of ground bait there was no bait limits at that time anywhere um and you could just really just dominate so i think that set a really good precedence for you obviously when you've been over to like obviously european mm. world countries Massive. as well because it's all about attacking isn't it obviously yeah it's all about period. attacking and it's all about accuracy yeah, yeah you know yeah. i spoke about accuracy with what we've done today yeah and it no matter what you do in fishing if you can increase your accuracy you'll catch more fish whether yeah, it's yeah. slider waggler pole sh you know in the edge whatever you want to do accuracy i see it with anglers i go out with anglers and the one thing they do straight away is they improve their accuracy, fishing to the end with a far bank marker, yeah. pot, pot placement, everything plumbing up, and immediately they're catching more fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, being able to fire a ball of ground bait at 40 metres every single time in the same spot, and again, just casting just past it, bringing your float into it, your rods round. And the beauty was back then was no, it was, because we've been doing it here a lot, we knew what, we had the gear, we had the floats, we had the durable line, we had the rods. Yeah. We had the catapults. And we had the mindset of feeding a ball as big as you could make every single chuck, full of casters and dead maggots. And, you know, we sort of, you know, we got the jump on a few people, I suppose is the best way. You know, they were behind, they didn't have the floats, didn't have the line, the rods, the technique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I think's an important thing. And, you know, when we started, employing it at places like Larford and that you had it to yourself you came here and everyone was doing it yeah right but you okay. went there and, like, and no you're in amongst it. people loose feeding casters at 16 meters and I, th and, and I think he banned it not long after didn't he that yeah, long because yeah, yeah, he said yeah. the fish were getting pushed yeah. out too far or something yeah again you know like I you know it, it's a method that I love fishing but would it still know, work now Will it wouldn't <clears> compete with the it compete with the pellet you wagon know I've tried it here it and yeah. it's strange because if you come and sit here on your own, you'll catch one a chuck on it. Yeah. If you come and do it in a match when other people are feeding pellets, it doesn't work. Just the fish are so tuned into the pellets, pellets in the noise, the taste, the whatever. But they just love pellets and it doesn't work the same. Right. Okay. But if you sat here today on your own and did it, you, I think you'd catch one a chuck. Proper. Going back to the wagglers themselves, were they basically like sliders, but obviously thick so you could use them as wagglers? Yeah, so we used to use, um, we didn't used to use like float stops. It was the, the green census attachment um, or a Milo like T-bar attachment. That's so, it. Well, I, yeah. When I was next to Michael Sanders in the England trial on gold, he had it sort of like, he's floating it like a Paternoster loop and he'd yeah, thread yeah. his float for a loop and then just have it fixed. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. And that was like, wow, that's yeah. amazing setup. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, um, and I mean, again, we were learning as we were going yeah, along. Yeah, yeah, It wasn't like now where you could pick your phone up, go on YouTube and you've got, you know, the world's best commercial anglers at your disposal doing whatever you want, you know, if it's long pole cast as shallow. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. go like that and you've got Andy Bennett there showing you exactly what to do. Yeah. It wasn't like that then. We were learning as we were going along. But like I say, for me, the massive advantage was having Stevie 
um, who massive, uh, masses and masses of experience. Yeah, mum. Um, and you know the accuracy of feed. He'd obviously fished abroad a lot, firing ground bait. He got the right floats, albeit we doctored them. Yeah. But you know, back in the day, that was part of it, making yeah, your yeah. own floats well, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, cutting off. the top off this <laughs> and gluing that on there and whipping this on and d doing that. And you know, that's the part of fishing I do miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now you walk in a shop and you can buy whatever you need, and it's all made to a very high standard. And the advantage back then was knowing what you needed and being able to make it. Right. Okay. Right. You okay. know. So but, obviously in Europe it still comes to the fore a bit because no pellets allowed over there. Yeah. And obviously that ground bait and all that, so it's still used over there. Oh, I yeah. I bet you don't half miss it when you yeah. go back and do it and then you come back in. Yeah, and... I do. But also, you know, the one thing that I've started to appreciate when you get to a certain age, I'm in my late 40s, is don't how... Don't look it, mate. Don't look it, folks. <laughs> I feel it. Come on, lad. But it is how important experience is. Oh, mate. Having done it. You know, people talk to me about being match fit, fishing two, three matches. That's important. Preparation's important. But for me, out of match fitness, preparation and experience, if I had to pick one, I'd take experience every time. Experience, yeah. Because, Literally you know, done there, uh, seen it. You, you know, I can go, like we were in uh, Hungary a few weeks ago and it's slider fishing at 30 metres. And with after a day or two, I can do it because I've done it for, for 20 years. And, yeah. you know... It's a bit like Stevie Gardner now, you know. I know I could give him a catapult and a and a and a bucket full of damp lean, and he could fire it at forty meters. After a little while, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. not the first, second, tenth, twelfth ball. Never, never. But after you, a little it? while, his experience would yeah. would see him through, and ultimately, that's what we carried on into these matches in the Midlands and. You know, for a while, when it was allowed, it was... It was brilliant. And they're yeah. saying there were the people, loads of people listening to this, Will, who'd like, mm. never even heard of this or never even seen this style of fishing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's like, obviously, it's not forgotten because you're still doing it, like, in Europe and that. But yeah. I reckon we should have, like, uh, an old-style <coughs> school methods and all that coming back. You know what I mean? That's yeah, what yeah. We need to, floating pole. Yeah. Kind of floating, floating pole, Will, pole, and all yeah. that. I mean, that, again, I was on Did the Did that match. ever go here, floating pole? Do you know what? <laughs> it was one of those... Um, and the first time I ever saw it, we were on a Super League final. And the first day was on the Trent, and the second day was at Hayfield in... Hayford. Hayford in yeah, Northampton. Yeah. Snake Lake, brilliant fishery. Yes. Still got the scars to prove it. Oh, that I've was a landing one, net pole there. Oh, bloody hell, Will. Actually, I caught one really? of the big big uh, ham and the cheese one. toasties. You won the ghosty. Yeah. And it, <laughs> my landing net just exploded. And, bloody hell. But that's it. But... We actually went and Barnsley were in the final. Um, and I think we won or they beat us by a point on the Trent. And all week it's this talk of they've got something up their sleeve. and What, Barnsley? They, yeah, they've oh, got right, this go new method. Um, it can't get beat. What are you thinking and, it was? I'm like... thinking, you know. But again, we had a team of unbelievably strong carp anglers. Um, people like... Give us a list of who was in the team. Like. Uh, so it would have been myself, Stevie... Glenn Fleet, uh, Bullet, John Merritt, brilliant angler, still speak to him now, catches loads of fish. He goes down the specimen route now, right, but okay. I still speak to him all the time. Yeah. Uh, Dave Hurry, Steve Champion. Um, I just can't, you know, so many good anglers back in the day. Is this when De was Des at in your So Des was, was still fishing for Thatchers at Thatchers. this time. Right, okay. Um, but yeah, Property, you know, it wasn't short after this, but. You know, this was a team that used to fish here, used to fish Nutfield Prior, used to fish Broadwater, carp anglers. So like carp, back in the day. get ready. And, yeah. and we were going there and we were catching loads of fish. Again, 12, 14 pints of cast. Oh, just, roughly, is that what you're doing? Yeah. Just smashing them against the far bank, yeah. fishing shallow, <laughs> lifting and dropping. And and, and and my first recollection, and, and, you know, this is taking nothing away from Barnsley, you know, they are and always have been you know, they are certainly now the best team by yeah, a mile. They've got yeah. the best anglers. They're the most professional. Back then when Dorking were dominating, they were as good. And if we won it, they'd finish second. If they yeah. won it, we'd yeah, be yeah, second. Yeah. And, you know, like I've got some fantastic friends that fish for Barnsley. But on this occasion, it was a case <laughs> of we've got something up our sleeve. It can't get beat. And I always remember, <laughs> um, who was it? And this, this, sorry, Will, this is pre-F1s as well, when it's all yeah, carp. Yeah, it's all carp. Right. You yeah. carp from four to eight pounds. Yeah. Um, 
and I've got some brilliant stories from Hayford, but this particular Go match, on. Steve Sanders, who Andy Love at the time was a captain, and Steve Sanders had fished on the river, but he wasn't in our in our carp team. And he walked round after an hour, and I'm like, I'd see what they're doing. I see their poles floating, and they're just shipping in. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, it, it, how's it going? And he said, well, put it like this. There's 48 carp <laughs> caught in the match, and Dorking have got 40 of them. So don't worry about it. And we just carried on, and... You know, like, had some fantastic, you know, matches and and and, and that was, you know, but it, it it was a very good method. Yeah. And whoever thought of it, it's, like, brilliant. I remember the first time I saw it was at Moreland's Farm, Will. Uh, and remember John Talbot back in the day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It took him, like, however long to weigh in, because everyone caught, like, well over 100 pounds. Yeah. He's like, right, that's getting banned. I'm not weighing in now for that long again. It's, like, proper yeah. brilliant story. But when you think yeah. back to methods and all that and obviously like yeah. lights of the waggland like from where they were to where they are now with the pellet yeah. it's just mad all things yeah change, yeah isn't it? yeah i mean it's you know and it, it's just brilliant to look back mate and but how it evolved yeah you know for me waggler fishing went from loose feeding maggots yeah with little stan bennett peacock yes. wagglers yeah, yeah yeah you know back then three four pound maxima was seen as rope you know it was like unbreakable Used to fish that on, used to um, like the Normark nor Borons. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the Browning 8010 yeah, reels yeah. and this, that, and the other loose feeding maggots. To then the ground bait with the bigger floats, and then obviously pellets, to where and we it's are just now. progressed into one of the deadliest ways of fishing these commercials for carp. Yeah. That 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 there is. I remember the first time I saw you down. Uh, Gold Valley, the pellet waggers that uh, you were using then were similar to these. Like, remember, they like the Garbolino ones, weren't they, with the, the discs at the bottom? Yeah, yeah. They're sort of like that, and you yeah. show me someone similar to them, and it's not yeah. changed too much now, has it? Basically? No, no, but it's the same as everything. The gear's been fine tuned. Yeah. Um, obviously, the quality of the tackle that comes out of a lot of these companies now is just better and better and better. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, ultimately, the better your gear, the, the more fish you're going to catch. And yeah. with wagglers, you know, the smaller, denser but still keeping the weight they fly better they fly you know straighter truer more yeah. accurately if you're casting at shadows especially dobbing fish yeah the lines are thinner but stronger the hooks are sharper stronger but lighter everything's, and everything's yeah. just evolved and yeah. like i say it's for me you know there's a few methods in commercial fishing that i think you know to to do well in these finals places like Hayfield and and that you need to be good at and obviously Pellet Wagner is one of them. Plays a big part of them. Yeah, massive. No, I mean, massive. anything else to add, Richard? <coughs> been a bit I, quiet just, on this, haven't you? Have you actually been here, Rich? Yeah. It's nice to reminisce, isn't it? We both love talking, that's Oh, problem, just mate. like waffle all day. You've got no fishing. chance. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Before my time, innit? I'm a bit sad I've missed all this. Well, you were like carping back then, weren't you, in your bivvy and doing, yeah, other things. But yeah, carping. yeah. Yeah. But making bacon butties, that's what I meant, Mitch. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, yeah, on, but, well, nice. Is there anything left in like waggler development, do you think? Or is it now just <clears> getting that um, much? I think now companies are going down, they're making them the balsa. Um, and especially, you know, the ones I've been involved with the development, they know the real important parts, keeping the float light, the weight, you know, the loading in the right place and the strength. I can only see maybe a different material if something came to to light like a you know a a, a heavier plastic or so i don't know i'm just yeah, yeah 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 but other than that i can't really see the the dense foam or the balsa floats being improved on you've seen today they cast dead straight that's it even with heavy line you can cast the distance and and, and with accuracy I know everything's always evolving, but with the technology that's available today, mm. you'd think it'd have been thought of already, wouldn't you? You know what I mean? Well, but yeah, maybe a carbon air waggler. Ooh. What about Will's that? Will's on it. Yeah, that then, folks. Carbon Might be air. a little no, bit well, expensive. Like, but oh, yeah, what? definitely don't let me have a go, Will. <laughs> <laughs> that's going straight. 3D printed, Spittles. like hollow carbon. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. okay. Yeah, and just a little like button itself. on the side to change the colour of the tip. Then I'll just like press it and it'll cast itself here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little LED on top to change it. <laughs> but, <laughs> flashy lights, disco lights. <laughs> <laughs> but as far, you know, I can see lines being improved on. Yeah. Right, okay. Even to the fact, you know, I've sat here and tried fishing my pellet magnet with 08 and 010 braid because 
Blimey that. Obviously, you can cast a tiny float a long way. And one of the lads who fishes here, he actually won fish South Ashley Blunt, a fantastic angler. Right. And he fishes with O10 Braid. What, because on his waggler? Yeah. Yeah. That's well, going to be what's savage that like? taste. What's it like? like well, ooh. obviously here, braid's allowed. Some venues, it's not. But if again, if you're fishing with your clutch, no, and it's no, no different to feeder like fishing. Just, no, no, shock. no shock lead or nothing. He's got the strength, obviously, O10 braid. You cannot, you could tow my van with it. Flipping it. Eh? You know, but you've got, it's ultra thin. And obviously you can cast a tiny, like you can fish like our seven grand ones to the rope here. Fantastic, but again, it takes a little bit. So can things be improved on? Yeah. Right. But obviously, and people will say you can't fish it, but it's no different to feeder fishing. You know, if you're feeder fishing, you get a bite with line, you go whack, don't you? Yeah, yeah, if you yeah. feeder fishing, it goes like that with braid. You just pick up and, and it's the same with a waggler. So there are things that can be improved on, definitely. And, you know, things like braid or very, very fine, polished, super strong line. Attachments, definitely. Yeah. You know, attachments are probably one of the only thing with pellet wagglers that people are still making themselves. Yeah. And it won't be long before a Darwa, a Preston, a, a, a Guru go, Bosh, there you go. There you go. This is what we Clip do, that yeah. on your float and away you go. Yeah. And it casts right and straight. But ultimately, as you know, mate, you have a lot to do with, you know, one of the biggest tackle companies mm. in, in the world. If a product is bought to market and it's not right, it gets found out quick. Yeah. Yeah, with yeah. Facebook and everything else now, it only takes a few anglers around the country to buy it, clip it on, it flies, it waggles, it's no good. Yeah. Straight away, everyone in the country knows. But likewise, if you're lucky enough to get a product dead right, yeah. they all know. It goes the other way, doesn't it? That yeah, the yeah, wagglers yeah. are right, they fly straight, they're this, this and this. Yeah. And and ultimately, I think that's why the you know, the carper range from Dara, the, the, the Bolsha and the foam ones have just flown off the shelf. Yeah, they are really nice, mate, yeah. Mm. Proper. Yeah. I think we'll end it on that one then, Will, no and then, uh, yeah, have another little chat in a bit. Right, so we hope you are enjoying the video that you're watching, if not have just watched, but what we'd also like you to see is the packages that we include for our more technical, informational stuff, where what we can bring to you is all we pretty much know about the technical side and our match style side of fishing. And I'm what we have, bit. <laughs> you are, of course you are in this bit. We have two sides of things. We have the basic package that for 4 99 you can watch us fish live matches, a Q&A every month, and additional stuff from Matty Doors with live matches and more technical stuff on his side. Or we have the all access package where you can literally see technical insights live matches from again from us but also from some of the best anglers flipping on the planet i mean we treat it as three days coaching for us and we go out and we show you what we're learning for anglers like darren cox andy bennett their ship to name but a few well worth a look if you fancy having a little bit more fishing content to watch